is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Missy Kohler. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. This segment of the news is brought to you by Silver State Health, bringing quality medical and psychiatric care to Pahrump. Call 775-505-1214 for an appointment. Welcome to News 25 on this Tuesday, Election Day. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Missy Kohler. We're so happy you're with us tonight. Well, Knight County Clerk Sandra Merlino spoke to News 25 today at the Bob Rood Community Center voting polls to give an update on how it's been going. It's good. Yeah. It's good. You know, the lines are long, but we're trying to get people through as fast as we can. I've heard the wait is about 30 minutes. We have a lot of same-day registrations, and that does take a long time. You know, this is a huge presidential election. Everybody wants their vote to count, and I just think everybody wants to vote. You know, we have over 12,000 mail ballots already returned, and then the turnout for early voting was over 8,000, and I bet today we hit a few thousand, too, just throughout the county. Sandra said that early voting numbers this year aren't as high as in the past. She thinks that's due in part to the extra time it is taking to process in voters. Yes, it is. Everything is an effort. You know, we're cleaning pens, we're cleaning the kiosks where they sign in, we're cleaning the machines. So it does take a little longer. And the hard thing is actually the, the rurals. You know, this is considered the big city, I guess, but in Round Mountain and Beatty and Amargosa, those voters, because they didn't come in for early voting, they're just getting slammed today. Those people are showing up to vote in person, so they're very busy today. Marlino said the preliminary results will be released tonight around 8 p.m., but mail-in ballots will still remain. Mail-in ballots must be postmarked today, and the clerk's office has 10 days to count those. Counting of mail-in ballots began on October 19th. No matter how long the line is, if you're in line at 7 p.m., you will be allowed to vote. Chris Zimmerman, chairman of the Nye County Republican Central Committee, caught up with our camera today to give his thoughts. The campaign couldn't be going better. Uh, we actually just saw the Trafalgar Group, uh, which actually pr correctly predicted the election in 2016, release their numbers for Nevada, and we showed th that Donald Trump is leading Joe Biden in this state. So this state is not only in play, we're in the lead. We have nothing but great energy going on in this county. Everybody is smiling, everybody is excited. We have people running flags, we have people honking horns. We have never seen this level of energy, there it goes, we have never seen this level of energy here in Nye County and in the state of Nevada in any election in the, to my knowledge. So we see as, as important as electing and re-electing Donald Trump is, we also see that it's our local elected officials that have the direct impact on our lives. So we not only want to get good people elected into office and be excited to be able to have them elected into office, but then we want to have those great relationships with them so that going forward that, uh, that relationship can blossom into good legislation, into a working relationship for the challenges of our day that we need to solve. We do have a watch party tonight. Uh, it's going to be starting at 6 p.m. Uh, primary focus on the members and their guests, but we're going to be watching the election results as they come in and uh, cheering on Donald Trump and his re-election. And it will be the Trump train all over again uh, with Nevada now firmly in Trump's corner and giving those six electoral votes to him. But you can find us on social media and our website, nigop.org. You can get all the information you want from there. Well, if you've noticed that we've had a lot of Republican stories, we want to tell you why. After calling and emailing the National Democratic Convention and the Nevada State Democrats, here at News 25, we have to tell you that the local Nye County and Nevada Democrats did, did what we think is a disservice to our viewers throughout Southern Nevada and Northern Nevada by not responding to any of the requests for event access or to conduct an interview. In fact, the local Nye County Democratic Party refused not only not to go on camera themselves, but denied anyone else in the party to speak to the media. The Nye County portion has been dwindling for several years. Today at the polls, when having a member prepare for an interview, they were ordered not to do the interview and come back over to the pop-up tent. We repeatedly asked to allow a person to do a positive interview and speak to us, but instead the group said that they could not speak to us unless their leader agreed for them to do so. After speaking with a Nevada representative of the Democratic Party, they agreed to send us some video or set up a Skype interview today and have not answered our request to receive any of those by news time today. 
You've probably seen the recall to select Ted set up around town. Well, today we caught up with Kathy Girard and her petition gathering team to find out what the statewide effort of recall Sisolak is all about. We are hoping to recall Governor Sisolak for his constitutional illegalities, which means it has nothing to do with being a Republican or a Democrat. It has to do with his illegal actions. We're talking red flag laws. We're talking no knock warrants. Uh, we're talking mileage study now for possible taxing on how many miles you drive. And you know for a rural, one way into town is six miles. Can you see that? Then there's also suggestion of sanctuary cities and this Nevada turning into a sanctuary state. It, like I say, it has nothing to do with being a Republican or a Democrat. It has everything to do with constitutional illegalities. And I, you can go to Taking Nevada Back, Recall Sisolak, or Battleborn Patriots online, and there's recall locations, and you'll be able to find where they are in Nye County. In fact, all the counties in Nevada, you'll be able to find them. Red flag laws, if your neighbor decides that you're dangerous and they, and they know you have guns, they can go to the local law enforcement and say, that person is a danger to me and my family. Guess what? You get a no-knock warrant and your guns are gone. That's proposed and they're waiting for the signature to have it go through the assembly. The deadline is December 3rd and we just hit the midway point. And you know what? You can ask any one of us how many signatures we have and we're not going to tell you because we don't want Governor Sisolak to raise the amount of signatures that we need because he did that. If there are enough signatures, he gets recalled. He resigns and a special election is held. If the recall signatures are enough and we're shooting for 350,000, right now the minimum is 244,000, but if we shoot over it, that means if there's, for some reason, a signature is invalidated, we've got that buffer in there so that we do make the minimum. More News 25 coming up after the break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back and thanks for being with us tonight. Well, Apple has a big event next Tuesday. McDonald's hires a new chief of diversity and inclusion, and manufacturing in the U.S. is up. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Topping our news, Apple is about to roll out its new chips for its Mac computers. The tech giant is holding an event next Tuesday at Apple headquarters called One More Thing. Apple made huge news back in June by dropping Intel chips to power its computers. McDonald's is hiring a new chief of diversity and inclusion. Reggie Miller previously worked for the parent company North Face. Miller will now be starting next Monday at McDonald's. The fast food chain has faced charges of racism and harassment coming from its workers. Checking the economy, U.S. manufacturing powered up in October. The ISM index increased to a reading of 59.3 from 55.34 in September. A reading above 50 indicates growth. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. Thanks, Angela. Well, an arrest warrant for a man in prompt leads to an additional offense. On October 20th, Nye County Sheriff's deputies were granted an arrest warrant for Peter Helfrick on the charge of intimidating a public officer. Detectives were able to locate Helfrick as he was allegedly leaving a residence and advised another deputy of his location. Deputies attempted to pull Helfrick over south of Rain Dance as he approached the stop sign on 372. Helfrick failed to pull over. He turned east on 372, attempting to keep the motorcycle officer from following. Dispatch was notified of the pursuit. Helfrick approached the intersection of 160 during a heavy traffic time and attempted to run the red light. The officer pulled up beside the driver's door and pointed his gun at Helfrick, ordering him out of the vehicle. Helfrick was allegedly manipulating his cell phone in an attempt to record the interaction. The officer ordered Helfrick out of the vehicle and reached through the partially open window, unlocked, and opened the door. The officer took control of Helfrick's left arm and unfastened his seatbelt. At this time, other deputies arrived and assisted in removing Helfrick from the vehicle and took him to the ground. Helfrick allegedly continued to physically resist putting his hands behind his back and was forcefully placed into handcuffs. 
Halfrick was arrested for intimidating public officers and conspiracy to elude, evade, or failure to stop. And a traffic stop in Pahrump ends in arrest. On October 28th at approximately 6.45 p.m., detectives observed a street bike come to the intersection of Wilson and Linda and not come to a complete stop. The driver then proceeded east on Wilson. A traffic stop was initiated at Wilson and Lola on the green Ninja Kawasaki. The driver came to a complete stop and was identified as Benjamin Stallings. Stallings advised that he did not have insurance or registration for the motorcycle when he was asked to provide both. Upon a DMV check, his driver's license allegedly came back suspended out of Missouri. Upon further investigation, the motorcycle came back allegedly stolen out of Washington PD in Missouri. Stallings was then detained and Mirandized. Stallings allegedly stated that his brother, who lives in Missouri, had purchased the motorcycle from an individual whom had previously sold him a stolen bike that he had been charged with before. Stallings said that he had been in possession of the motorcycle for approximately one month and had come to Pahrump recently to visit a friend. Stallings allegedly admitted that he should have known that another vehicle from the same individual was most likely stolen. Stallings was placed under arrest for failure to obey a stop sign, operating an unregistered vehicle, no proof of insurance, driving with a suspended license, and possession of a stolen vehicle. And now we are going to go to your Medical Minute. This Medical Minute is brought to you by Spring Mountain Medical, health care the way you always imagined it. Hi, my name is Nathan Bell, nurse practitioner with Spring Mountain Medical, and today I would like to talk to you about the importance of monitoring your kidney function. The kidneys are the pair of organs on either side of your lower back, and one of their responsibilities is ridding the body of waste products by filtering the blood. Why is this important? Well, when we were kids and young adults, our kidneys were working perfect with no issue, and I like to imagine this like a bathtub drain with the faucet on full blast. The water drains as fast as it comes out of the faucet. For some people, their kidneys stay at that level way into their later old years. For others, depending on lifestyle choices, certain medications, and genetics, they may experience a faster decline in their kidney function. If you were to cover the drain even further, or even cover it completely, that would be considered kidney failure, which would be your bathtub is no longer draining correctly, and that dirty water starts to fill up that bathtub just as, as if your waste and your blood is no longer filtering properly. The problem with this is people can experience short-term kidney failure or be approaching kidney failure and have no idea this is taking place. This is important because previously prescribed dosages or even certain medications entirely when your kidneys were working correctly could build up in your system and cause toxicity or overdose. So you can see this is obviously important for you to follow with your healthcare provider to be tracking your kidney function. If it has been a while since your last checkup or if you're having trouble getting in an appointment with your current provider, or if you'd just like a second opinion, please make an appointment with myself, Nathan, or my partner, Marquita, nurse practitioners at Spring Mountain Medical, as we would love the opportunity to work together with you for your health and wellness. And this has been your Medical Minute with Nathan Bell, nurse practitioner. Thank you. And News 25 will be right back. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Thanks for being with us tonight. If you're heading to the polls this evening, there are some precautions you're going to want to take to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Joseph Cabaza says it's a good idea to assess the safety of the situation when you arrive. If it doesn't feel safe, if it, does, if it feels like there are too many people or too many crowds uh, or, um, or distancing and masking not enforced, no, I'm recommending people well, either get back to the end of the line um, or just leave and come back late in the day and try to be like the last person online, um, per se, where it can be a bit less stressful when there's less people around. Once you get in line to vote, you'll want to keep six feet away from others, wear a mask over your nose and mouth, and sanitize your hands after touching objects like door handles and voting machines. Many polling locations provide hand sanitizer, but it's not a bad idea to bring your own, just in case. In addition, standing quietly in line will generate fewer respiratory droplets, so try to avoid talking on the phone or striking up a conversation with those around you. People looking for another way to protect themselves can wear a face shield in addition to a mask to prevent droplets from getting into their eyes. One other thing I've been recommending to patients, especially since lines have been longer, is wearing a face shield. Um, that gives you an extra layer of protection in case you end up in settings where maybe spacing 
is not enforced. Um, hopefully, masking is something that is um, uh, enforced, but it gives you an extra layer. Poll workers will encounter many people over many hours and may be at higher exposure risk. So in addition to masking, social distancing, and good hand hygiene, they may want to consider constructing a clear plastic or glass barrier for added protection. Thanks so much, Missy. Well, meet a cat with royal attitude. Darby O'Donnell is at Desert Haven Animal Society to introduce us to a regal gal. Hi, I'm Dari here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Princess. Her attitude fits her name very well. She is a princess. She is a huge uh, black and white domestic long hair. Um, she has a very sassy personality. She really likes to just be pet when she wants to be pet. Um, she likes to roam around and do her thing, and then when she is ready for your presence, that is when you're allowed to pet her. She is very friendly. Um, she was an owner surrender because unfortunately the family was unable to care for her anymore because someone was hospitalized. But they say she's very friendly. She just has a little bit of a sassy attitude. So if you want to come and see Princess, because she is beautiful like a princess, give them a call at 775-751-7020 to make an appointment to come and see her or any of her friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society. And you can also look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. <laughs> News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Hi, it's John Kohler from KPVM Channel 25 News. We're standing in line here at the Bob Ridd Community Center. It's, uh, it's, it's election day, and look at all these uh, happy people going to the polls. It's a long line, and, uh, but it's a shaded line. It's here in the trees, uh, and it's... Uh, it's a, it's a great day to uh, come on out and, uh, and let your voice be heard, and we hope you all do that. Uh, the polls close at 7 o'clock tonight. We'll be getting in some preliminary numbers we'll be sharing with you later, probably uh, starting about 8 o'clock uh, from the KPM uh, News Studios, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, this election. This is uh, finally the culmination of all of this, and uh, aren't you glad that it's finally going to be over? If you haven't made it down to the polls, 7 o'clock is when they close. If you are in line at 7 o'clock, they will take your vote. Uh, it takes about a half hour to get through this line from the back of it to where, where I'm standing here. So plan for that. Maybe bring a sandwich or some water. I don't know. Uh, but uh, please come on out and vote. Uh, Bob Rood Community Center. We're here in Pahrump. And we'll tell you all about the weather and all the other news of the day when we return. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hello, good evening, Nevada. Happy Election Day. Did you get out and vote yet? Still got time. Polls close at 7. If you're online, they'll take your vote. They will. Good news for Fernley. Looking like 74 degrees for a high today. 36 for a low. Out in Fallon, 77 was the top mark. 31 is going to be the low mark tonight. Man, might be thinking about bringing in the koi. <laughs> your ponds are going to be freezing out there in Fallon. Carson City, 75 was your high today. 34 will be your low tonight. Out in Tonopah, 69, feeling pretty good. 34 degrees for a low. And Goldfield, 69 was the top mark. 35 would be the low end. And Beatty, all the way up to 82 and 48 for your low. In Amargosa, uh, where the wind comes whipping down the plain on an election day, 85 degrees all day long. It'll be 52 by morning. Fear not, uh, Las Vegas. Uh, fear and loathing in 86 degrees, 59 for a low tonight. And in Death Valley, back to the 90s, 91 degrees was your high today, 64 for a low here in Pahrump. Well, it's just the paradise, don't you know? 80 degrees currently online down at the Bob Rood Center. People that are voting until 7 o'clock, think about it. You haven't yet. Got my America on. Look at that. High today was 85, and uh, but they were standing in the shade. They were standing in the shade at 85. North Northwesterly winds to 5 miles per hour. We had 15% humidity. Sun rose this morning at 6.09 a.m. It will set tonight early. Well, that's the miracle of daylight savings times, don't you know? Sunset getting it dark at 4.45 p.m. We'll see a bunch of clouds uh, towards the morning. 32% humidity will be picking that up. Uh, east, northeasterly winds to 4 miles per hour and 52 degrees will be as cold as it gets, not too shabby. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, staying with these weather in the 80s until Saturday, and then that dips right on down. Look at that, 55 degrees will be as hot as it gets on Saturday, Sunday, even a little bit cooler, and uh, hovering around the mid-50s for the rest of the week. 
Um, looking at the low end temperatures, 37, 32, 31, 34. Yeah, it might be about time to give up on the pool. I don't know if I'm going to drain it. What do, you do? what do you do, folks? I'm asking. I'll find out. I'll find out. All right, back to the desk, Deanna. Missy, good night. All right, I don't think that John's correct on those numbers. That can't be true. Weather Is it guys, really going to dip? Weather guys are never right. I know. Uh, we'll see how that turns out this um, weekend. That's going to be some crazy different temperatures. Of course, we got to start covering our plants and stuff, huh? i got to get out my Alaska clothes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't have any of those. <laughs> All right, um, so... Um, a live election night coverage. That's what's going on here tonight. Um, starting around 8 p.m., we're going to be uh, talking about the polls, what's going on, getting some numbers here across the Silver State, and, of course, uh, Nye County numbers. We'll see what's going on with the national election, too. Why not? And when we find right. out, we'll let you know. All right. All right. So that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Missy Culler. Have a great night. Good night.